This is in New York show. I am Michael Pinto, where I teach you how to start flipping or wholesaling houses anywhere, um, or if you're already doing it, how to grow your business. So I got a question about zombie properties and whether that was due to documentation issues. So let me just explain why there are so many zombie properties in New York and why, and I'll talk more about why they're not, not good theoretical driving for dollars um, candidates, most of them. So a couple things. New York is unique in so many ways, one of them being that um, the length of time it takes to foreclose on a property here is just astronomical. So I'm talking about, and when I tell people this, they don't believe me, but it could take more than a decade to foreclose on a property. So um, it would be very common today, if you went to a, a Nassau County auction, foreclosure auction, you would find properties that went into foreclosure in 2008, right, 15 years ago. A little crazy, but the more it's the absurd and ridiculous foreclosure and eviction moratorium of the pandemic push things back many years. Now, because it takes so long to foreclose on a property, um, what happens is people die, for example, they don't necessarily die, but some do, or stop paying and give up the property. Now, I guess we should really define what a zombie property is. A zombie property is a property that has been vacant for a very long time. I saw one yesterday, it's been vacant for 10 years, couldn't get inside, um, was trying to, it's all story. But um, that's a zombie property, right? Now, in other states, uh, zombie properties won't stay. A zombie property will usually mean in other states that there's no mortgage on it, right? Actually, the one I saw yesterday had no mortgage on it, but there's a whole long list. So let's stay away from the one I saw yesterday. But in New York, a lot of these zombie properties are properties that have a mortgage on it. It's just taking the lender an incredibly long time to foreclose. Now, uh, there is no state like it. Nothing's even close. California, nothing is like it. Everything, uh, every other place you can really, uh, you know, you foreclose much quicker. One of the reasons why I uh, do owner financing properties in Texas is because foreclosures there are several months instead of uh, more than a decade. But, um, so the question was whether it's paperwork. Now, there are a lot of issues with the foreclosure, the legal aspects of the foreclosure process. So what, what that means is that obviously is a very long length of time, but also if any of the documentation is off, then it'll slow the process down. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the reason why it's a zombie property for so long is because the, pro the, the documentation's off. Even if the documentation's right, um, it could still take forever. And for this reason, so I, there was a point in time where I said, oh, everybody's doing driving for dollars. I'm going to do that too. So I had a bunch of people driving for me. I got the deal machine app, which is a good app. Uh, they went around looking for these crappy properties. I got about 600 properties. And then what I did and what I recommend everyone does is actually run them through basic searching. Now, basic searching is easy in Nassau County and the five boroughs of New York City, as well as most of the other counties in New York. It's a bitch in Suffolk County. Um, you're going to need some paid software like PropStream or something like that um, because their software sucks. Just talk a little bit, talk about how shitty Suffolk County is. They had the worst system ever. And then it's almost ironic um, about... Nine months ago, some hackers hacked the entire county's uh, county clerk system, um, and, and you know was asking for millions of dollars in ransom. No one could close properties. No one could 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 record documents. It was the craziest thing ever. I don't know whether they paid. They probably did, or whether they figured out a way around the hack. But they're still terrible. It takes them forever to to record. And it's ironic. Now it wasn't like they had this great system, and some guy. Some Russian hacker found his way in. It was the worst system. So this may be a blessing in disguise. Maybe they'll actually redo the system completely because the system was horrible. Just to tell you why, to explain why, when we look up recorded documents, so uh, things get recorded, like uh, a mortgage gets recorded, also known as a deed of trust, or a deed gets recorded. And in Nassau or, or the five boroughs, I can find these things, pretty much anything recorded since 1980, and I can see the document. Now, I want to see the document, right? Because, for example, if there was a deed recorded on a property, I want to see. I might want to see who bought it. What's the name on the deed? Is it a corporation? Is it a person? Um, in Suffolk, you could only see what kind of document it is, but you couldn't really see the document unless you paid. And I, I promise you now, I'm not a stupid guy. I have a degree in engineering. I could not figure out how to pay the county, the Suffolk County, to see documents. And I tried. So I literally tried to give them money, and all they would do was send me a list of instructions that made no freaking sense. That's how backwards that system was. So. What I tell people to do if you find an empty property is to, hopefully it's in Nassau or five boroughs, but if it's in Suffolk County, you can do this on a paid system. But for free, um, in, in Nassau County, you would go to um, 
that LRV land record, whatever the hell that is, or mynasaproperty.com and get the section block and lot. If you have those numbers, three sets of numbers, you can then go to US land records and you can look up, you can do a section search and you can see all the documents that are recorded on that property. In the five boroughs, there's something called Acris. It's a great system. You can look up the BBL, the borough block and lot, and then you can see everything recorded. And then you can see it. So now why do you search? What are you looking for? So ideally, if you find the zombie property, there is nothing on there, like nothing was recorded in a long, in a long period of time, or you see a satisfaction of mortgage, somebody paid off the mortgage. That So then that is a lead, right? Then you gotta actually find out who owned it, maybe you gotta look at their relatives. But most of the time, what you're gonna see is that properties, and this is what I found on all 600 properties, properties fell into one of four categories, all of which to me are not worth the effort. The first is, that they were bank owned already. So that means that they went to auction or from the foreclosure and the bank bought the property. At a, at a foreclosure auction, very often the the lender or the plaintiff um, has an upset price. That's the minimum price they'll take. And when they do, uh, when they don't get that, it just goes back to the plaintiff. Because the bank now owns the property, right? They decided that this house is, we don't want to take less than $400,000 for it and, no, and, and nobody wanted to bid 400. It happens all the time. So then it becomes a bank owned property. That's not a deal anymore, right? Can't call up the bank. I can't call up somebody in West Fargo and say I want to buy this at a discount. It's going to go through one of their REO, which is real estate owned, which means bank owned agents, and it's going to sell on the market. And you're probably not going to be able to get a deal on it. That's number one. The second category that came up a lot is it's already investor bought, so it went to auction, and an investor bought it, right? So it's gone, right? That investor is not going to sell to you at a discount. He wants that uh, that equity. Now, is it possible? All right, possible, unlikely. The third is that it's a reverse mortgage. Now, I'm one of the few people, I think, alive that understands how reverse mortgages work. And I can tell you, it's very, very hard to, to figure out what the balance is on a reverse mortgage. So there could be a reverse mortgage of somebody who died 10 years ago. And what we used to do when we recorded reverse mortgages, most of them were HECMs, Home Equity Conversion Mortgages, which is an FHA insured product. And the rule was we had to record a mortgage for 150% of the total amount that was allowed to be taken. So if a if a borrower could get $400,000, we recorded a mortgage for 600,000. Now, that doesn't mean the borrower took 400,000, it just means the borrower was allowed to take 400,000. It's possible the borrower only took 100,000. So whatever numbers there, the balance can be much less and the balance can be more, right? Cuz if if you, the borrower took the most out, took all that money out, interest is accruing on that and it could be double now in 5, 10 years. So a reverse mortgage to me almost impossible you need the borrower who's probably dead or their heirs and that heir has to be proven by by uh late by named an executor or an administrator um by the probate court and only that person can get the balance from the servicer whoever's servicing the loan very difficult not easy to do if you get the balance to me i can tell you whether it might be a deal or not but it's very hard to figure out the balance so i don't deal with reverse mortgages too hard um, and the fourth one is that it's way underwater. So if somebody took out a mortgage for a million dollars 10 years ago and went into foreclosure 10 years ago, they probably owe $2 million. If I can only pay $300,000 for that house, is it possible that I can get a short sale done? Possible, yes. But if something's so way underwater, I usually don't want to even try. So I have found that almost all zombie properties that I've seen in New York fall into one of those four categories. It's bank owned, it's investor bought already, it's a reverse mortgage, or it's way underwater. Now you may say, I'm willing to, to do the work, right? I'm willing to do the work to find the heirs of the deceased person on a reverse mortgage. I'm willing to do the work to try and get, by the way, in all these cases, you have to find the seller, right? You can't, I can't go to a bank that has a house that's way underwater and say, I'd like to buy it. They're gonna say, who the hell are you? You have to find the seller and say, hey, do you wanna do a reverse mortgage? I mean, I'm sorry, do you wanna do a short sale? And if they agree, then you got to try and get the lender to agree to your price. It is not easy, right? You're, you 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 got a whole extra step here of finding the person who can help you. So, for my time, none of those situations are worth dealing with at all. And I found, guess what? All 600 properties fell into that category. And it's funny because Deal Machine used to say, "Take 600, 600 properties to get a deal." And I met the Deal Machine guy, and I'm like, you know, I did 600 properties, I didn't get a deal which is a stupid question because that doesn't mean every 600 you'll get a deal. He said, what's your ARV? What's your after repaired value? And I said, it's like five, 600,000. He goes, then you need 1,200 properties. So guess what? It's a lot of work in New York. I don't recommend it, right? Now, it doesn't mean you can't find a deal, but it's a lot of extra work. For my, for my money, the best use of my time is to talk to sellers who can give me a straight up decision. I want $240,000 for this house. And then I can negotiate with them, I guess, but at least I'm talking to the decision maker. I don't have to deal with a bank. I don't have to deal with with uh, a reverse mortgage lender that's not gonna tell me how much is owed on it. 
So those are, those are my thoughts. So zombie properties are there in New York because the mortgage, the foreclosure process takes forever. Forever. I, I mean, literally. I would not be surprised if five years from now there are properties that went bad in 2008 and then we are, uh, you know, you know, 20 years, 20 years later that are going into foreclosure. So I hope this was helpful. If you're interested in all the ways I can help you, go to howtoflipnewyork.com or learn to, learn to flip and wholesale.com. What else? If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're watching any media channel, please click the thumbs up. The likes really help me. And, um, Please keep the questions coming. I'm answering a lot of questions today. I'm going to do a bunch of videos today because I did not do a lot of videos this week. So I'm going to make them up today. I do five times. I post five times a week. So uh, you can ask any question. It does not have to be about the video you're watching. Um, if it's something simple, I'll just reply with an answer. If it's something I've covered recently, I'll send you a link to a video. And if it's something new or something I haven't covered in a long time, I will do a brand new video on it. Thank you very, very much for watching.